As dark mode is on the peak of its popularity, there are more websites with dark interfaces than ever. If you've ever wondered what are the rules behind building such layouts, well, we've put together a quick guide to walk you through the crucial principles and help you pick the colors so all of the elements are readable and accessible. So whether you're willing to create a dark version of your existing website or are going to build a dark theme design from scratch, tune in for this episode. We'll only touch upon the design aspects, specifically color. And if you want us to continue this dark mode design series, leave a comment and let us know what else you would like to learn about. So we've split this guide in four main parts. Background, text, UI elements, and imagery. The first problem you'll need to solve is the body color. Your options here range from pitch black, although some guys do not recommend using it, to rich gray and an infinite number of shades and tints of color layered on top of gray or black. The last one is a kind of a trick that you can use to find a unique color for your dark background. Just take your primary color, put it on top of your dark or gray surface, and lower the opacity to something as low as 9%. Or try and use some blending modes like overlay or soft light and play around with opacity. Even in dark mode, you can use elevation to communicate hierarchy when using cards, for example. Use different shades of gray by putting white color on top of a card and lowering the opacity to get a lighter shade of the base color. The lighter the color, the higher the card is hovering above the surface, or the other way around. For headings and titles, it's okay to use pure white. But for longer paragraphs and blocks of text, it is better to use shades of gray because they put less strain on the user's eyes by maintaining lower level of contrast. It will reflect less light, making it easier to read. To make sure your text is still readable, use online tools to check if your colors pass the contrast requirements. For labels on buttons, choose the shades of white or black depending on the brightness of the accent color, or alternatively, darker shades of the primary color if the contrast level is appropriate. If you want to assign one of your accent colors to some text, elements, they shouldn't be long sentences or paragraphs of text, but rather subheadings and labels. And picking this approach, you also shouldn't choose the weights that are too light. The rule of thumb here is make colors less vibrant and stick to one or two accent colors for your UI elements. Minimal color palettes and gradients generally look good on dark backgrounds. Let's now see what is behind these rules. If you choose too many different colors, the dark layout will look way too busy. And you don't want that. It is recommended that your palette consists of the primary color color and three more additional colors for links, error message and success message respectively, if you are going to need those elements on your site. Now, as we pick that primary color, we think that this saturated blue must be a good fit, but the contrast checker tells us that it's actually not. Why is it important to even use a contrast checker? Well, it's one of the most crucial decisions when designing dark layouts. Your colors must be pleasant to look at, shouldn't vibrate against a dark background, and what's even more important, must make the elements readable. For now, the contrast checker tells us that this color combination does not pass the requirements. To solve this issue, we need to desaturate our primary color so it doesn't clash with the dark background. Let's see what options we might have. Google Material Design Guidelines suggest that tonal values from 400 to 50 are the most suitable for dark backgrounds. So based on what we've talked about above, this is how you might choose to style your button. Nice, but sometimes this might not really fit the vibe you're going for. Then we can try something different here. So as you know, you have three basic values of a color, which are hue, saturation and lightness. We wouldn't change the hue value if we want to keep our original color and we have already tried changing the saturation. So now to make the color lighter without making it too dull, we can try and move the lightness slider up a little bit and see the result. Now as for the states, well for the light mode we can use elevation, we can change the color when showing a state change, etc. It works the similar way with the dark mode and we totally can make it a little bit bit more interesting by adding a shadow of the same color to create this subtle glow effect. Generally, there are two types of visuals we use on websites. Photography, sometimes video, and illustrations, either 2D or 3D. When you have a dark background paired with large, high contrast and colorful images, the final result looks amazing. Let's start with illustrations here. If you have a lot of light elements or accent colors you use in the light theme, consider swapping them with the appropriate shades of these colors so they match your dark mode palette. You can use the same tricks we've talked about earlier in the video. It's often even easier with photos. All you do is pick an image that would fit your color palette and style and make sure you adjust the colors, saturation and contrast of your image a little bit to make it pop. So now we reach the end of our quick dark mode design guide. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Feel free to share your thoughts, experiences, tips and tricks and even share some of your work if you recently tried experimenting with dark mode design. Thank you for watching, stay safe, take care and be creative.